Okay guys, welcome to my brief presentation about monoclonal antibodies as a therapeutic drugs. You know, um, monoclonal antibodies are getting uh, more and more uh, important because uh, they are really, really useful to treat um, severe disease. So, well, um, the structure of the presentation, uh, which I want to show you, is like this. So we will start with the history, and then following we have an introduction to the monoclonal antibody, and then we we are asking the question: What is the difference between polyclonal, clonal, and mono, uh, monoclonal antibody? And there are, of course, not just one type of monoclonal antibodies uh, and uh, may maybe one of the most interesting part is how we can produce monoclonal antibodies and then I will give a brief um, a summary of all, all of it. So the brief history of it, so 1991 there was the first serum therapy and people talked about the magic bullet uh, which they assumed to be present uh, in the blood and then there was the first in 1952 there was the first pulled IgG treatment IgG we will later come to this topic and then we have a, a we had a lot of time uh, till 1975 where people first was shown that um, uh, antibody monoclonal antibodies are can be produced by the hi hybridoma technology very very powerful technique on this time they got the Nobel Prize that, that was the Ms. Köhler and Milstein uh, really really good science and then as just the getting an idea during this time also the insulin uh, again diabetes mellitus uh, was uh, cloned into the Escheria coli bacteria and then another technique which was uh, very powerful and it's still uh, used the phage display to produce monoclonal antibody and then the first monoclonal antibody uh, which was approved by the FDA was the Orta clone Octa-3 uh, antibody and then 1997 Rituxan, the first anti-cancer monoclonal come to the come to the market, and then Herceptin against breast breast can cancer come came one year later, and Rumicade against autoimmune disease uh, came to the market, and then definitely one of the amazing projects of human beings, we produce a six billion dollar mouse by Abgenix, where we produce human monoclonal antibody generated in a mouse this is really really impressive this is like like a library where you can produce human monoclonal, monoclonal antibody in a mice so and then the first fully human monoclonal antibody came to the market called Humira um, also called Ad Adalimumab and then Avastin came 2004 and Yervo as an immunomodulating monoclonal antibody came to the market. So um, let's say we have in the pharmaceutical market um, 850 billion dollars and from that 50 billion dollars are currently generated by the mo uh, monoclonal antibodies. So it's really uh, a drug where from biotech companies can catch up with. Uh, so, what is the uh, what is the definition of a monoclonal antibody and the polyclonal antibody? So, monoclonal antibody is a antibody where we you where we uh, where it is generated from a single B cell to a single epitope of a, of an, of an ant, uh, antigen. So we have a strict line in case of polyclonal antibody we have several mixture of antibodies where are attacking 
different sites of a uh, epitope of, of an antigen. So it's a mixture. So it has disadvantages, disadvantages and uh, advantages um, which we can see in the next slide. So the difference is polyclonal antibody are inexpensive to produce so you immunize an animal and it produce for you a mixture of um, uh, an ant antibodies and you can purify it and use it. So the technology is really uh, not that uh, sophisticated and the skills are, are not uh, really uh, hard to learn so my grandmother can also inject uh, an antigen to a animal to immunize it and of course the time scale is short maybe like 30 days in a rabbit and recognition of different epitopes is uh, like the definition of polyclonal antibody of course this advantage uh, advantages is that from batch to batch from animal to animal we have a, a variability of the production of the polyclonal antibody so in the case of monoclonal antibody it's really really expensive to produce it so you think twice or you have a lot of money or you, you know Bill Gates maybe so or and mm, high technology is required so to establishment of the, all the techniques like hybridoma technology or phage display or producing in a cell line it takes a lot, a lot of time trainee that you need really really uh, specialized employees where really understand the technology and can use it it is really time-consuming like to get a monoclonal antibody to the market it takes at least seven years if you're good so let's come to the molecular structure of the monoclonal antibody here you can see a overall structure so first of all we have a part a tail uh, which is called FC this is the fragment crystallizable parts then we have a part where we are attaching to the epitope this is the FAB part this is the fragment anti uh, antigen binding part so we have a heavy chain the shown is uh, shown in a yellow and the blue blue uh, uh, parts and then we have a light chain the purple part and the green parts and of course we have a constant region where we always have the same part and definitely a variable part where it's always changes uh, to a specific epitope which is quite import important so um, without having for example um, having any kind of pathogen in our, our body uh, we are able to produce 10 to 12 different antibodies in our immune system so without any activation with the antigen you see there is a really 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 variability in that thing so there's a hinge range, hinge range where is a, a connecting all the part of course uh, we, it's not shown here we have also disulfide bridges between all this um, uh, secondary tertiary, tertiary structures uh, of this um, antibody so um, of course in the beginning we was not really producing fully human monoclonal antibody that means the sequence is identical to the human uh, genomic so we, we started to produce marine uh, monoclonal antibodies and um, as you can see here we have four different kind of antibodies the first one is full marine the second one is a chimeric where the variable part is uh, marine and then we have here humanized part uh, where the CDR parts this is these are these are the parts where we have the interaction between the epidope and we have a full human um, antibody and you can see here the different percentage of the amount of marine and human um, sequences so you can also see here uh, some examples uh, of the uh, of the drugs which are in the market so the nomenclature is like for marine OMAP, for um, chimeric it's XIMAP, for humanized is SUMAP, and maybe you, you should memorize UMAP because people now uh, are generating just fully human monoclonal antibody. 
because the problem is the biggest problem is um, the marine uh, monoclonal antibody is really really uh, has a lot of side effects and uh, you can, can get allergy uh, and um, maybe anaphylaxia anaphyl 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 um, and that can uh, be a problem so these guys is like this and this is a little bit crazy Ooh. and this one so okay of course we have a fully uh, molecular antibody in the structure but the more we understand the molecular biology we started to engineer make protein engineering in case of monoclonal antibodies so here you can see different kind of fragments where we can uh, uh, make use as a therapeutic drug so for example you can cut a monoclonal antibody with pepsin or papain then you can generate for example uh, fab uh, fragments or we can ma make mini bodies or dia bodies etc so the thing is uh, also for no, no neurogenerative disease uh, we have a problem with the uh, blood brain barrier to reach them with the monoclonal antibody because it's so big so it's an issue of um, of the size of an antibody and uh, of course the clearance of small uh, kind of uh, fragment antibody fragments is more or much more but there is some modifications modifications we, we can do uh, that them keep in the blood and in the in the system uh, without her having a fast clearance then of course um, uh, you can uh, use the antibody as a postman so you can are you can do a arming of antibody it's called immunoconjugation so you are attaching for example, a um, toxin or a cytokine or a um, radioactive molecule to target a tumor cell, it can internalize, internalize it and then destroy the cell. This is really, really impressive, definitely. And, of course, there are, we can come to the technology of uh, generating monoclonal antibody. So, maybe the three ma main uh, things are, are to a traditional uh, generating monoclonal antibody where we immunize the mice get the uh, get the harvest the cells from the spleen make a screening and then uh, can use it also using phage display where you're cloning your um, your 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 um, uh, um, uh, monoclonal antibody library into a phage which is, which shows on on its surface and then you can make it screen and then you have the best fitting uh, antibody which is uh, you, uh, or targeting your antigen of course we have also a mice which is generating a fully human uh, antibody so let's come to the uh, one of the most important technologies as i said people got for that the uh, nobel prize the medicine nobel prize uh, so first of all in the hybridoma technology you, um, you immunize your mice then the mice generated uh, different kinds of uh, b cell which are expressing the uh, antibody and then uh, you are collecting the uh, collecting and selecting uh, your uh, your B cells and then from that you can get uh, your monoclonal antibody you can uh, make um, uh, make it grow in cell, uh, in cell culture or can inject it again to the mice to produce it like here is listed definitely the point why we are calling uh, hybridoma technology hybridoma because B cells have a short lifetime so you can not, not uh, um, make them uh, passage in the cell culture so they are dying after 50 or 60 uh, passaging so what the trick is you you merging a myeloma cancer cell with a B cell and then making them immortal 
you know and then yeah, they are growing and growing and producing your antibody and this is really really powerful you can freeze it and then tow it again freeze it again tow it again and they are still producing your target um, antibody definitely impressive so the second uh, technology is the face display here you can see you can uh, isolate b cells from human from the blood take the b cells make pcr get all the genes uh, the part of the genes where, uh, where where the gene arrangement happened so you can take it from the M mrna and then clone it into phage the phage displays on the surface you are making a screen with a a plate full of epitopes and then you can make it bio panning so you're you're making evolution and the best uh, uh, best affinity uh, of a ant antibody to an epitope will be selected and you can uh, grow, grow your antibody so well um, so the best would be, of course, if you are interested to produce monoclonal antibody, is monoclonal antibody, so not a monoclonal antibody, so we don't have to discover uh, USA again. So the best is, of course, naked monoclonal antibody instead of conjugation, because um, the problem is when you're using normal monoclonal antibody, you need unity prescription, and always a doctor have to be uh, present. In a case of conjugation, because it's more dangerous you have a tox toxin or radioactive uh, attachment to antibody you need always to go to the doctor to injection so every two weeks or every one week you have to go there and this is more costly and then of course we want to fully human monoclonal antibody because even if it's fully human human antibody we have still side effects so there are also some um, combination treatment like with MTX or PG hundred uh, uh, and so uh, this is the best uh, of course we still we have your we are using pre-filled pre-filled syringes to inject to uh, subcutan to uh, so under the skin skin or from the vein so we make it more consumable consumable if you make a uh, inhalating or non-invasive ad administration so the best market is the target of uh, oncology or autoimmune or in inflammatory disease and of course if you want to uh, if you want to oops, sorry if you want to produce the antibody best would be having a cell line we like CHO uh, which is uh, genetically engineered for producing an antibody and make them grow and produce your uh, I don't know 10 or 20 grams of anti antibody per batch that would be the best okay I would like to thank you thank you for your attention and uh, maybe we see us in the next presentation